over the field and got receivers crossing and running seams. A and again, uh, they just, that underneath, short underneath stuff, like you said, Gordon, the possession passing. So the offense of the Cavaliers showing a little life late in the first quarter. Clock running at two minutes. It's Lopez in motion for the Cavaliers. Ben Tran drops back, has a couple of receivers. Lopez out on this side. Lopez still on his feet down to the 18-yard line. Yes, yeah, Santiago there, Gordon, did a good job. They motioned into trips, and they were able to uh, get the left side of the Rancho defense's uh, secondary flooded, and Ben put the ball right on the money to uh, Lopez, who did a good job of turning, getting his, getting his body squared and getting up field for added yardage. Again, those high percentage passes. You can see here, Ben, nice tight spiral right in, and uh, Steve catches it in stride and, and gets squared up field. Nice play. And a sloppy beginning to uh, that snap. The ball is lost on the play, but recovered by Santiago. As you saw, a great instant replay of that completion of Steve Lopez. Second down and nine. A gain of one somehow on that fumble for Santiago, but they'll take it. One minute, 10 seconds left in the first quarter. Set up on the wing again. The give to Villa, up the middle, Villa, untouched, stumbles in and hops into the end zone. Touchdown, Santiago. You know, we talked about that earlier, Gordon. You know, when you're able to pass the ball, it's going to open things up for your running game. And Santiago stretched Rancho's defense just enough in that double situation. And they popped a little, uh, a little uh, screen tie or a little draw type play to uh, Octavio. And he did a real nice job of running. And it was wide open. I mean, they were expecting something completely different. And uh, Villa, right up the middle, practically untouched. There we take a look at Villa's yeah, you run. See, yeah, you see a lot of Rancho's linebackers. They have to, uh, they have to escape and run with the uh, run with the receivers and the backs that are coming out. And that opened up the middle, like you said, for Octavio Villa. And Villa was not going to give that score up. He was getting in no not matter what it be took. Denied. You like to see that as a coach. That kid sniffing out that goal line and getting across. So Villa puts the Cavaliers on the board. The extra point is good, 20 to seven. Rancho Alamitos by 13, one minute left in this first quarter. And again, we talked about it, and uh, I think Santiago did a real good job, Gordon, of not, uh, not losing focus. You know, they continued to uh, stay within themselves. They know they can pass the ball and they can run the ball, and if they just stay with it like they did there, get a drive going here and there, you know, you know stranger things have happened, and they can uh, pop back in. A very impressive drive by Santiago. 50 yards in about two minutes. Yeah, so if you can do that, that gives you a little hope. Yeah, and now, now your goal is to get another 65-yard drive going and eat up maybe four minutes now, and then get another 65-yard drive and eat up five and, and uh, take that ball out of Rancho's hands. Villicano boots one. Try to get into the end zone, but not successful. Mike Hanlon takes the kickoff and runs into a Cavalier. Hello. Well, I'll tell you, Eris Uloa. The special teams play for Santiago is like uh, night and day from the first quarter into the second. That was a tremendous hit and good downfield coverage. You know, That's last time they kicked off, you know, they uh, allowed uh, Cozy to run it back and they looked slow and sloppy. That time, boy, they were crisp and downfield in a hurry. Amazing what a score and a little momentum will do to a team. It fired them up real quick. Yeah, 53 seconds left in the first quarter. The deepest the Ranch Alamias Vaqueros have had to drive so far. 25 on their 25-yard uh, line. Hanlon pitched back to Kosi. Kosi with about five yards. Clock running. 35 seconds to go in quarter number one. Yeah, Rancho came out and gave a little uh, little option look, faking the dive and, and pitching it to Leo, trying to get around right in. Clock continues to run to get one more playoff before this quarter is out. Second down and five for Rancho Alamitos. Two near side. 
And the give up the middle again to Kosi. Kosi scoots ahead for two more. Still short. It'll bring third down. And before another play gets off, that's going to do it for the first quarter. First quarter is in the books. After one, the Rancho Alamitos Vaqueros 20, the Santiago Cavaliers 7. We'll be back with the second quarter right after this. used in the world in the last 40 years none had more power than this one middle of the action second quarter has begun Third down and four for Rancho Alamitos, and they're marked with a first down. First down, Vaqueros. 20 to seven, Rancho. You know, right now, Gordon, it looks like Santiago's defensive line is uh, playing toe to toe with Rancho's offense. They're reacting pretty well. They're uh, they're getting rid of their they're getting rid of their uh, man in a hurry and and uh, doing a pretty good job. All right, let's quickly go down to the sidelines and Jeremy Woods. Jeremy. Well, after falling behind 20 to nothing, this ball control offense of Santiago's has the ability to come back. They had the nice 50-yard drive, and if they stop the Rancho Alamitos Vaqueros now, watch out because this Santiago team is gaining confidence back upstairs. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah, we talked about that, how important that is. Yeah. Just unbelievable how things can quickly turn. They just have to maintain that, though. That's very important. Yeah, and, and you're right, Gordon. In order to maintain that, the defense has to do their job now. They've got to shut Rancho down and get the ball back without Rancho scoring. You're watching Channel 3 Sports on Time Warner Cable. I'm Gordon Spencer along with Jeff Butefay. Garden Grove League football. Game number one, the Vaqueros and the Cavaliers at Bolsa Grande High School. Rancho trying to add to their score. Kosi looking for more up the middle. Scoots ahead for another first down for the Vaqueros. Yeah, Gordon, Leo did a real fine job of uh, when he's feeling pressure, he separates his feet a little bit and brings those knees up. And boy, he's just, he's a load to bring down. You know, he's so strong in the legs and with that low center of gravity. If you don't get, wrap him up and gang tackle, he's going to drag, he's going to drag defenders like he did just there. Ten and a half to go in the first half. What an offensive first half it was. 27, 20 to 7. Rancho. Rancho with two split wide. High formation, Frank Roberto blocking for David Vickers. As if David Vickers needs help blocking. <laughs> well, there's the versatility that we were talking about, Gordon, with the backfield of Rancho. You know, even with, uh, even with one of your, quote, star, unquote, uh, running backs out, when you can uh, alternate in at tailback, uh, Leo Cozy and David Vickers, oh my goodness, and then you still got uh, Hanlon and uh, Roberto and some of these kids up front blocking for him. You know, you miss a little bit, obviously, but, but I tell you, you don't miss a whole bunch because David uh, is, is every bit as fast and strong as, as Alex is. Second down and six for Rancho. Again, the pitch, the ball's fumbled by Cozy. Cozy gets a Cozy bounce, and it looks like it lands right back in his hands, but they're going to uncover the pile. Boy, what a break for Rancho. And San Diego looking for a break. That would have been... Yeah. yeah, it looked like on that pitch that uh, Cozy tried to capture the ball with his pads instead of his hands. And when you try to catch the ball with your pads, it tends to ricochet, as you just saw there. And then uh, since that ball doesn't bounce straight all the time, it's, uh, it's up for grabs. So, as you said, Rancho got a lucky break there with bouncing... Uh, bouncing to Leo as he was falling down. Kosi, 20 yards so far in this drive alone. Third down and five. Taylor Yandel. Taylor Yandel. Play action. Yandel looking for someone who's going to have to keep it. Gets knocked out of bounds at the 45. So Yandel will get a couple, but couldn't find a receiver. Yeah, Sandy, yeah, that's, you know, you can consider almost a coverage sack there. You know, Taylor was... Uh, 
rolling out to the right and looking downfield, but the uh, DBs from Santiago did a real good job of covering the receivers. 20 to seven, eight minutes and 20 seconds left in the first half as the clock continues to run. Fourth down for Rancho Alamitos, and they're looking for two. And it looks yeah. like they're they're going to go for it. Yeah, you're going to see Santiago real attack here. They're going to put eight guys right up on that line of scrimmage and come after him. Set up with some power. Vickers, the pitch to Kosi. Kosi follows his blocker. It looks like, I'm not sure if forward progress, if he made it or not. It's going to be close. Yeah, I think he got just enough, Gordon, that it uh, looks like where the official's marking the ball, it looks like he got just enough to uh, keep possession for Rancho. Depends on where they mark it, but it looked like he made it and then uh, got pushed back, but it just depends on where they decided. Uh, this is probably going to be very close. Looks like they're uh, going to call for the chains. There's some discussion right now. Uh, the way for the chains to come out and uh, go for the official mark. Yeah, one thing you notice about a lot of the good running backs, not only in high school, but college and pro, very rarely do you ever see them when they get hit fall backwards. They're all generally always falling forward. The ball's always getting pushed up field. And uh, Leo did a good job of uh, falling forward with the football. So first down and 10. The Carroll's make it another first down. Again, we'd like to thank the sponsors who have been helping us out, or are set to help us out this year. Dairy Queen of West Garden Grove, located at 12510 Valley View Street. Check out their drive through. Don't forget hot eats and cool treats. Now Leo Kosi is anything but cool. Tonight he has been on fire. Kosi with the ball again picks up another couple for the Vaqueros. Brings up a second down for Rancho. The 13 yeah, point lead. I think Gordon that uh, Rancho is going to get tagged here for uh, offensive holding. And the Vaqueros go backwards. Not something they've uh, done a lot as far as their offense has been concerned this game. Yeah, you know, uh, Rancho with that high-powered running attack uh, doesn't seem like how many yards they have to go first down. It never seems like it's out of range. There you take a look at us high atop our, uh, our little home up here. <laughs> home away from once home. Once a week. <laughs> for the next uh, six weeks or so. Taylor Yandel, play action. Yandel looking deep. Just overthrows his intended receiver, Nam Win. Yeah, you know, Gordon, on that play, I don't know if there was a mix-up with the receivers, but uh, Rancho had two, uh, two of the receivers deep within about, uh, they are about 25 yards down the field, and they were within about five yards of each other. And... Uh, that would make me believe that there must have been a uh, the mix-up on the routes that the receivers are running there. Second down and 20. And special thanks also to Perry's Pizza. Perry's Pizza located at 6937 West Chapman Avenue in the city of Garden Grove. Give them a call, 898-7670. Great place for great food and go down there and watch your favorite sporting event, maybe even watch uh, this game. Taylor Yandel, the pitch back to Kosi. Kosi, little option, Kosi. Lost one up and it's picked by Santiago. That was a duck. Picked by number 25, Carlos Carbajal. I'll tell you, Gordon, from the way that play looked and the way Leo was uh, reacting, I think he, uh, I think he, the receiver was a little bit out of his range, and I think he tried to muscle the ball too far down the field, and uh, as you said, came up short. Well, Kosi, uh, not known for his quarterback duties, so there'll be nothing, nothing taken away from him. He still won't be known for his quarterbacking <laughs> duties. But hey, when he can run the ball like that, shoot. Who cares? For any mistake, he'll, he'll make up for it. Santiago takes over to the 30-yard line in their own territory. First down and 10, under seven to go in the first half. Pass underneath completed by Santiago to Steve Lopez. Check that, number 81, Ray Martinez. 
Yeah, it's impressive right now, Gordon, the way Santiago's been able to throw underneath and uh, Ben's taking his three-step drop and nice tight spirals are going, uh, you know, within a five, eight yard range, which is all they really need. And uh, they're doing a good job of now, like you said, not only controlling the ball, keeping it away from Rancho, but burning some of the clock. Coach Ben Haley real happy with his maturity so far this year. Oh yeah, Ben looks 100% improved over last. First and 10. Tran back under pressure. David Vickers coming from behind. David Vickers with a sack on Ben Tran. Yeah, uh, Santiago came out with uh, five wide outs, Gordon, and, and, and uh, nobody in the backfield and no back offense. And uh, fortunately for Rancho, with the linebackers, the way they run, you saw David Vickers coming off the right flank of the uh, Santiago offense, and there was nobody there to pick him up once he cleared the line of scrimmage. That's the first time that uh, Ben Trent's really been any, uh, under any pressure tonight, and then obviously the Rancho defense has adjusted after these last couple possessions of Santiago. Yeah, I think you're going to see Santiago keeping somebody back there now to protect Ben uh, so he can get that ball off. Second down and 16, a loss of six on the play. Tran back again, quick drop, completed to number 81, Ray Martinez again. Yeah, Santiago's doing a good job, Gordon, of, of stretching the Rancho defense and then finding those open seams. And Ben's taking a three-step drop and delivering in a hurry. And uh, San Diego's doing a good job of that, uh, like we said, it's that uh, possession uh, passing attack. Clock running, 5.15 to go in the first half. Twenty to seven, Rancho Santiago, recovering a fumble on this drive and offsides. Octavio Villa looks like he uh, missed the signal. He was past the line of scrimmage a couple yards, a little too late or early, I should say, on that. Yeah, a, a no-no for an offensive receiver, particularly when they're split wide out is to be jumping off sides. They've got a clear shot looking at the ball, and when it's snapped, that's their cue to take off. Because many times a receiver that far out, they won't hear the signals from the quarterback. So, so they should be coached and schooled to uh, go on the snap of the football. And uh, that, was just, that was just a mental mistake there by Octavio. Yeah, you know, Villa wanted to get in on that, uh, on this passing attack that Santiago has <laughs> been displayed. He got a little too excited there. Yeah. Again, two wide near side for Santiago. Third down and six, Tran. Has a little time, and it's thrown behind a couple, actually thrown behind number 25, Carlos Carbajal. Also, again, Morgan Heskett was in the area. Yeah, again, Santiago came out, Gordon, with uh, trips left and, and a doubles to the right. In other words, they had three receivers on the left side of the line and two on the right and trying to stretch, uh, stretch Rancho as far as they can. And uh, when you don't have a back back there, you know, Ben can feel the pressure coming, so he's got to unload. Fourth down and six. Santiago will have to kick it away. Adrian Villacana. He has earned his work tonight. Back deep is David Vickers for Rancho. Nice high kick by Villacano. Vickers loses it. Gets it back, but that's just enough time for that Santiago special teams to get down there. Yeah, they did a good job going to sprinting downfield, staying, uh, staying in their lane of responsibility. And uh, when David bobbled the ball, his head goes down to find the ball. You can't see what's coming. And by the time he was able to start to straighten up, uh, Santiago was all over him. Good hustle. Four and a half to go in the first half. Uh, all the scoring done in the first quarter. 20 to seven, Rancho Alamitos. Well, I've, I've got to think here, Rancho's gonna uh, try to make this the last scoring drive of the, of the half. They've got four, a little over four minutes, and I think they're gonna try to keep possession of the ball and just run it. Kosi. Carrying everybody with him. Literally. Kosi picks up about nine. Second down and one for Rancho. Kosi carrying for nine yards. Second down and one. For Rancho. And number 59, that's Jose Cuevas on Santiago. Jumped. Yeah, that's... Uh, Boy, that hurts. I mean, there's no excuse for that. And I know the young man's uh, anxious and trying to be aggressive, but, uh, you know, that poise and uh, 
you know, that's, he's got to maintain that because uh, if Antioch keeps doing this, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot and give Rancho another score before half. Three minutes, 59 seconds left in the uh, first half. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we'll take a look at both of these schools. We'll preview uh, the Santiago Cavaliers and the Rancho Alamitos Vaqueros for the 1996 season. Both of uh, those pieces can also be seen in our Pigskin Preview 96 show, which is also airing as we speak. Three minutes, 45 seconds to go. Kosi, once again. Yeah. yeah, one thing the Rancho Alaminos running backs do, and even, even Santiago's with Carbajal and Villa, uh, VF, Gordon, um, they're pretty explosive, and they hit the line of scrimmage real quickly, which doesn't allow for the defense to be able to react uh, and uh, give them much time to try to make the play. And... Uh, if you notice throughout the game, watch the running backs for both teams and, and, and notice how quickly they'll hit the line of scrimmage. Yandel under center, second down and five. And a little more confusion and flags fly again. So the fourth game of the season for both these teams, the first league game. And of course this maybe a little more nervous time for uh, as we start this game, this is the first one of the league, and this is where it really counts. Yeah, I think if both coaches are uh, probably at a loss right now to try to figure out the lack of execution. It's been uh, not totally sloppy, but there's been a lot of mental mistakes, you know, and the physical ones you can't do anything about, but the, the mental ones, those are the ones that will give you gray hairs. Second 10, five yards is marked off against the Vaqueros. Look out, Leo Kosi. Kosi wrapped up at the 47 yard line, just short of the first down. Santiago has called a timeout, their first of the game. Two minutes, 48 seconds left in this first half. Talked about uh, pigskin preview 96 our fourth year of uh, putting that program together. Yeah, that's a lot of fun to do, Gordon. I know a lot of the uh, players and fans in the league really appreciate it and, en and enjoy the uh, pigskin preview. And, uh, you know, I know it over at uh, Pacific and Garden Grove and Rancho, you know, when you're around, you hear the, hear the athletes talking about it and the staffs over there, and uh, they really appreciate it. It's a lot of fun to, to do. I know you guys have to put a lot of work. It's a lot of time and effort that you do, Gordon, with that, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's fun for everybody. Well, you help out in as well, so I know it's a lot of fun to, to have you do that. And uh, it's a lot of fun. All these, these guys work hard out here. I wish we could do it for uh, every sport out there. But, but, you know, I do need sleep once in a while, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, in this day and age, you know, you hear everything about uh, kids being more and more selfish and self-centered and all this kind of thing. But you got to, you know, give these athletes on the football field a lot of credit. They, they, they put in a lot of time, a lot of hours for their school. And for, and for their team, and uh, they should be commended for that. They're having a lot of fun. Third down and three, Kosi finds a hole outside. Look out, Leo Kosi. Kosi just puts his shoulder down and barrels right over a Cavalier and gains a couple more. Yeah. At this level in high school, Leo Kosi's got what you, more many people would consider the complete package. He's strong, he's quick, um, he can run around people. He can run over them, like you just said. And uh, not only is Leo a special athlete that, but Rancho's got two or three of those, <laughs> you know, in the backfield. <laughs> Always you know, someone to go to. Yeah, Vickers will do that, Blanco <laughs> will do that, you know, and uh, oh my goodness, they just keep coming at you. And talking to Leo Kosi, he says, you know, high school is it for him. He, he, he likes playing at this level, but it's sad because he's uh, so much fun to watch, but, you know, going for the, the education as well. And nothing there for Rancho. Well, I don't know. That play looked like it was uh, going nowhere from the get-go. I think so everybody kind of, when the ball was snapped, looked like everybody stood up and looked around and watched what was going on. And uh, David barely got out of his tracks there, David Vickers, before he got uh, gang tackled. One minute and 50 seconds left in the first half. We talked about Leo Kosi, uh, you know, when we talked to him in Pigskin Preview, he said he wasn't going to play. But I have a feeling that, you know, s people know about him around the county. And there might be some, uh, yeah. some other coaches out there yeah. trying yeah. to get him to come play. Yeah, he may find that football's still in his blood, and that uh, 
he still has a love for the game enough to want to keep going. Santiago plugs up the middle. That'll bring up a third down for Rancho. One and a half minutes to go in the first half. Yeah, if you're Rancho now, Gordon, I mean, you've done a good job for the last three minutes of controlling the ball, working it down the field, and last thing you want to do now is stall out on about the, uh, you know, 25, 25 yard line. So, uh, you know, they got to pin their ears back, execute, and keep pushing the ball up the field. Clock continues to run. A minute to play now. Rancho trying to score before the first half. 20 to seven, they lead the Cavaliers. And flags fly on the play as the Gibbs to New uh, to Atasi. To Atasi loses a couple on that play. Yeah, they uh, lined up New out of the tight end spot and then had him coming back across the ball, a little uh, fake pitch and uh, underneath handoff from uh, Taylor Yandel to, to New, but again, uh, penalties are stepping up to bite Rancho. So they'll mark it back against Rancho with 49 seconds frozen on the clock. And Santiago declines the penalty, so that'll bring up a fourth down for the Vaqueros. Santiago's uh, figuring there, Gordon. Uh, don't give an extra down. Santiago calls a timeout. Well, it's been a, a good uh, season so far, preseason for the Garden Grove League. They've really been very impressive, a lot of the teams out there. Yeah, you're right, Gordon. Um, you know, you talk about impressive starts for, for the league here. Rancho, obviously, at 3-0. and They played some good team. Western last year, my goodness, they were... Uh, semi-finalists in the playoffs uh, they defeated uh, Western soundly last week and uh, Pacifica is off to a good start 3-0 and they've uh, beaten uh, Huntington Beach and Westminster teams that uh, are in the higher divisions um, you know everybody's looking for Los Amigos to break loose pretty soon you know with that uh, huge line and those big running backs that they've got and uh, seems like coach Takahashi is always able to come up with something uh, up from underneath his sleeve to get them going um, so yeah, you're you're right, absolutely, Gordon. There's some there's some top-notch football being played right now in the league. Bosa Grande off to a, a two and one start. Yeah, quarterback Dougie uh, Bauman, the Bauman brothers' fame. He's uh, doing a good job for Coach yeah. Graves right now. They manufacture the arms in that family. Yes. Fourth down. Vicarro's going for it. Flags fly. A, a Tuatasi completes, but we'll wait to see where the flag. It's in the uh, Rancho backfield. Around the line of scrimmage. Might get another holding call. That's what it is. And it's against the Vaqueros, so they'll bring that one back. And don't forget, coming up at halftime, as we mentioned, we'll take a look at both these schools in a little more depth. Halftime sponsored by Dairy Queen of West Garden Grove. Located at 12510 Valley View Street near Lampson Avenue. Stop in for some hot eats and cool treats. And if you're in a rush, try that drive through Dairy Queen of West Garden Grove, where they treat you right. Again, they sponsor the uh, halftime that's coming up. Sounds good. Profile of both these teams. So uh, grab a dilly bar and uh, there you go. Should have a little time before the uh, third quarter begins to get <laughs> one of those. And the clock runs 40 seconds left Taylor Yandel scrambling under pressure gets one away and it's picked by Jose Palacios Palacios trying to stay on his feet brought down at the 35 so Santiago waited and waited and waited and finally got a break it pushed Rancho to the edge there yeah that was uh, that wasn't a real good decision by by Taylor you know he's uh, had a pretty good game so far up to this point I think he just tried to force it in there, try to make something happen just before the half. And unfortunately, he's rolling left and trying to sling it uh, sidearm going left with out, of, out of his right hand. That's an awfully tough pass for anybody to try to make. And he was surrounded by purple, so. Yeah, time to unload. That doesn't help. 20 to seven, Santiago trying to do something in the final 29 seconds of the first half. And again, flags fly before the ball is snapped.
this time it's going to go against the Cavaliers. So they've been hurt with procedure a couple of times in this first yeah. half. Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that these uh, teams are going to hear from their coaching staffs this half is, uh, you know, better execution. You know, we got to cut down on the mistakes, cut down on the penalties, and come out and play football like we've been uh, used to and capable of playing. So before they get started, it's first down and 15 for the Cavaliers. 29 seconds. Tran dropping under pressure. Has a man open, Steve Lopez underneath. Steve Lopez to the 50, down to the 44-yard line of Rancho. Yeah, and uh, credit Steve Lopez with a very heady play there, Gordon. You know, uh, when you're racing against the clock in the final seconds, uh, you want to get out of bounds. And Steve did a good job of working upfield, getting as much yardage as he could, and then getting himself out of bounds to stop the clock. And Ben Tran used that opportunity to race over to Coach Haley and say, what's next? That's right. We're on a roll, 21 seconds to go. Santiago looking to put some points on the board before the first half is out. Tran looks to the air again, under pressure, has to keep it. Tran's gonna lose three yards and the clock continues to run. Yeah, I think Santiago probably has their two minute package in obviously, but uh, they know uh, maybe two or three plays five uh, seconds the clock's still running this is gonna be it and Ben Tran aims for the sidelines it's thrown incomplete and the buzzer goes off for the end of the first half that's gonna do it for the first 24 minutes of play Rancho Alamitos 20 Santiago Cavaliers 7 enjoy the halftime and we'll be back with third quarter action in a bit may be one of the most experienced teams in the league. They have 14 starters coming back and a boatload of seniors. We all become like better friends over the years, so. And out there, we, we're just like a little family, you know? Because we just, we bond together for the last three years and it's gonna be our final year. So we gotta go out with a bang. If that's not reason enough, how about a running game that can feature any one of three backs? We've got Carlos Carbajal coming back. Uh, unfortunately, Carlos, I, I know in my heart, Carlos would have gained about 11, 1,200 yards rushing had he not broke his femur in the Bolsa Grande game. Octavio Villa is coming back, who's going to play some, some secondary for us, some outside linebacker, some running back. Uh, you know, if I asked him to ram open the bus door, he'd probably do that too. Jose Palacios took a year off um, and is back with us looking as good as ever if we can get him to avoid uh, leg injuries and that kind of thing, muscle, muscle cramps, mu uh, full groins, that kind of thing. Still, the Cavs may just go as far as junior quarterback Ben Tran takes them. He's going to have to play a big role and, and he, he's starting to get the idea on what patterns he has to read certain things. <coughs> Excuse me, and make make some adjustments along the way. I've seen him progress from the springtime to now, to the point that he should be able to handle whatever whatever is go going at him. And he's more mature. He hasn't gotten any thicker, but he's more mature. I think it's in my personality because ever since I was a little kid, when we were playing football out in the street, I was always you know trying to take control of the team. Or whatever. I think it's up to me to do that. does have some great breakaway speed, but he's more of a kid that, that will make you pay when he lines up with you. If you try to line up with him and take him on, he's a very quick cutter. He can cut on the dime. Just gives him the open. He knows where he knows where to make the cuts at. He's more of an outside breakaway. Once he gets out there, watch out. I, I don't I don't see anybody around here running him down. Alex, more, he's more of a uh, slasher type, juker. And then um, if you get him to open again, you can't miss a tackle on him. He's low to the ground. Great forward lean and uh, very powerful. 
Outstanding runner. I was probably just a um, north-south runner, just try to get up the field as quick as I can. It's unfortunate that uh, we only have one football to give away per play, but you can guarantee those guys are going to get it as much as possible. You know, offense has been off offense like uh, every other year. Running, running, running. What about the pass? After three years of John Frank's ability to air it out, Taylor Yandel gets the call. John Frank was a real, a real loss to us because uh, we really needed him. But we also got some guy to step back, you know, Taylor Yandel. He's doing the job real well, so I've got faith in him. Losing John Frank is a hard kid to replace. He's a three-year starter, and so I don't think I, I don't foresee us throwing the ball as much as we had with John Frank. Although Taylor. Yandel has, has uh, stepped up this summer and done an outstanding job, and, and we can throw the ball. Don't get me wrong, he can throw the ball. He's a big kid, he's a strong arm kid, and uh, he's just a tad inexperienced, although he's played some at, at the uh, lower level. He's played some quarterback. So we could, we could stick, away, stick with the same, uh, about the same ratio if I wanted to. However, I think uh, putting the ball in Leo's and Alex and David's hands is, is probably the way to go this year. Grande Stadium where the Rancho Alaminos Vaqueros set to kick off to open the third quarter with a 20 to 7 lead before we get things started let's go down to the field of Jeremy Woods who had a chance to talk to both coaches I Jeremy talked to both, both coaches at halftime coach Haley of Santiago said he thinks this team can win they can come back they just have to execute they have to stop the punts and the kick returns over on the other side of the ball coach Case for Rancho said we got to execute or we're in trouble they know that they got to play better and if they do they'll be okay he said back to you guys upstairs thanks Jeremy oh well, it couldn't have been said any better than that Santiago knows exactly what they need to do that's right Gordon we talked about that just before the half ended I think uh, both teams were going to get a talking to at halftime about the lack of execution and the number of penalties all the scoring done in this game in the first quarter, 20 to 7. Santiago starting off this quarter with good field position on that opening kickoff, starting at their 33 yard line. Ventran goes to the ground. Carlos Carbajal. Carbajal up the left side. Carbajal gets about eight yards. Bring a second down and two. Yeah, I'll tell you, Gordon, if you're Santiago right now, starting the third quarter here. Uh, you got to be pretty pleased considering that uh, before they got a chance to even break a sweat, it was 14 to nothing after about the first few minutes in favor of Rancho. And it looked like things were about ready to really uh, run away from them. But they hung in there and uh, stayed somewhat poised and under control and, and went for that short passing game. And they're still very much in this ball game. San Diego just starting to warm up in that second quarter. Just into the third quarter, Santiago with the ball. The give to Villa. Villa looking for something up the middle. Pounded on by David Vickers. Yeah, one of these two teams, Gordon, is going to have to come out right away and uh, make a statement that, uh, you know, they're, they're here and that they're not going to be denied. I mean, both teams, uh, you know, are pretty much offsetting each other with the number of penalties and the mistakes. So uh, whoever's going to be the hungriest and wants to get to that football before the other one, I think is going to uh, win this battle, especially in the second half. Clock running, 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. Third down and three. Rancho trying to hold Santiago on their first drive of the second half. The give to Palacios. Palacios and the running game of Santiago, as they uh, tested earlier in this, uh, early in this first, uh, second half, I should say, it's not there. Yeah, I'll tell you, Gordon, and again, we've talked about it all night long, you know, with the Rancho Alminos linebackers as active as they are and as quick as they are. You saw Mike Hanlon on that uh, play step up and fill before uh, the ball carriers from San Diego get to the line of scrimmage, and they stuff it for no gain, and now San Diego's got to uh, give up the ball. You know, they just, uh, you know, I, I, I hope they don't uh, get away completely from that uh, short passing game, especially in third down and short situations. Fourth down and three. Villacano back to kick as a flag is thrown. Villacano's got a leg. Knocks it back to Vickers. Vickers loses his footing at the 18, but regains control. Vickers will get stopped at about the 30-yard line, but we'll see what that flag 
was that was thrown right as the ball was snapped. Might have been another motion penalty. Yeah, it could be the way uh, the way Santiago's reacting. Yep. Cavaliers making the march back. Run a couple of halftime stats uh, by you. The halftime stats sponsored by Dairy Queen in West Garden Grove. Rancho Alamitos with a total of uh, 283 yards in the first half. Santiago, 111 total yards. Uh, these uh, stats unofficial, of course. <laughs> we are not responsible for it. <laughs> well, we'd like to thank Eileen Spila, who's uh, sitting up here. Well, we can't quote you on this, huh, Guard? <laughs> <laughs> She's doing a great job, though. Of course, Leo Kosi leads all yardage with uh, 214 yards on the ground and two touchdowns. Yeah, I would imagine he's probably one of the county leaders in multi-purpose yards, Gordon. But uh, you take into consideration the, the, the amount of yards he makes catching the ball, running back kickoffs, uh, rushing. The give is the Kosi. Kosi. Gets about three or four yards. Bring up second down. And seven. You know, you talk about the uh, potent running back situation that Rancho has over there. You know, let's not forget that uh, what makes that thing possible is that offensive line up in front. You know, number 51, Sean Sandoval, who was a starter last year. He's uh, the senior with the experience back from last year's team. And uh, I think Coach Case and his staff are really happy with the development that this uh, l offensive line is making. They're bigger and stronger and, and still pretty young. Second and seven. Pitch out lost there by Kosi and pounced on by the Cavaliers. Picked up by big number 55, Jose Sierra, the 5'11", 185-pound defensive lineman. It looked like the pitch was uh, adequate to Leo Kosi there, Gordon. At, uh, I don't know if he took his eyes off and tried to look upfield before he captured the ball. You can see it there, though. At, uh, come off his hands and recovered by Santiago. And boy, this is a break that if you're the Cavaliers, this is what you were hoping and praying for at halftime. And he need to jump on this chance, just like Sierra jumped on that ball. First down and 10, Santiago. They're loaded in the line for Santiago. Purple wall led by Ben Tran, pressure by Vickers. Nice little pitch out there to number 24, Pedro Hernandez, who's been kind of quiet in yeah, this game. Santiago game came out no backs, Gordon, and they uh, had a double tight with a trip situation and uh, ran a little delay to number uh, number 24 and a little delay and out and uh, Ben put a nice trajectory on the ball and uh, again, three, four yards, a crack, that's all Santiago needs. Pick up a four for the Cavaliers, brings up second down and six. On the 25 of Rancho. The give is to Villa. Villa looks for running room outside. Villa carries two Vaqueros with him. Out of bounds at the 19-yard line. You know, I'm really impressed with uh, Octavio Villa, Gordon. He does a real good job of taking care of the ball. He can, uh, he can work his way inside and stay in that running lane. And he also can bounce it outside, as you just saw there, too. He's a very good ball. There he is. And uh, they're taking care of the ball. He's got the ends covered up, going straight up the field. Good job by that young man. Via averaging seven yards a carry, and you can see why. He could carry a few with him on those runs. First down and 10 for Santiago. Again, the give to Villa. Villa and the Cavaliers have tried to go up the middle. That's not been successful. Yeah, the Rancher did a good job there of sniffing that out. Looked like he tried a little uh, counterplay back across the uh, across the football, the right side of the offensive line, and uh, Rancher's linebackers filled and stepped in. Nothing for the Cavaliers on that. Second down and 10. Eight minutes to go in the third quarter. The score remains 20 to 7 as it was in the first quarter. The give this time up the middle to Palacios. Palacios gets those wheels going and finds some running room up the middle. Very impressive drive right now by Santiago, Gordon. They're doing a good job of mixing things up with the pass and run and not being too predictable. And, and again, third and short now. Uh, you know, they you might... Uh, might consider putting it up again on a little delay or a little possession type pass. Well, Coach Ben Haley told Jeremy Woods at half, he said, we can win this game. We just can't beat up on ourselves. Third down and four. Tran. V. 
Villa, left side. Villa plows his way up to the four-yard line. First down and goal for the Cavaliers. Again, Villa does a real nice job, Gordon, of uh, getting through this, getting into his running lane and then uh, cutting back inside, getting his shoulder squared uh, up to the goal line and, and going forward for the yardage. He's very impressive, very impressive runner. Clock continues to run. Seven minutes left in the third quarter. Santiago trying to cut into that 13-point lead of the Vaqueros. Tran, little delay. This time to Carlos Carvajal in for the touchdown. A real nice counterplay, Gordon. And, uh, and Santiago had Rancho's defense uh, flowing the wrong direction. And that's what that misdirection or counterplay is all about. And uh, that tandem of Villa and uh, Carbajal, very impressive, as you can see here. Ben's gonna, uh, he's gonna fake it to Octavio Villa, and then he's got Carbajal scissoring back across the ball and uh, across the center and uh, diving into the end zone for a touchdown. Really, that was a real nice, real nice play calling by Santiago on that drive. Palacios, four yards for the touchdown. Villacano on for the extra point. Octavio Villa set to hold. Kick is up, and he lost it through. Santiago within six, 20 to 14 Rancho. Six minutes and 54 seconds left in the third quarter. Solid drive by the Cavaliers after that fumble by Leo Cosi. And again, you know, we, we, we talk about it, uh, you know, the turnovers and the mistakes more times than not, will come up, come back to haunt you. And Santiago, you got to credit them. They took advantage of that. And, uh, you know, like we said, Coach Haley at the halftime, uh, trying to rally the troops and tell them they can win this game if they'll execute. And again, now that the job for the Santiago defense is to, to hold Rancho, don't let them get the momentum. That allow their ball club to stay high, stay uh, on top, stay co co uh, confident and uh, get the ball back in their hands again. 25-yard drive for the Cavaliers. 14 yards on the ground for Octavio Villa, who led that charge. Carbajal ended it with a four-yard touchdown run. Right now, Gordon, it just, uh, it, it looks like there's, there's a complete mood swing. It looks like San Diego wants this game a lot more than the Rancho players right now. They know they made some mistakes. They're trying to make up for them. Here comes Leo Kosi. They need to stop him. And they do a great job. He's still on his feet somehow. But as long as they can slow him down and allow more tacklers to, uh, yeah, to get on top of him. Exactly. They get him surrounded. And after a while, you close in for the kill. And uh, Santiago did a real good job of uh, circling Leo, not giving him any particular direction to, that he could pick to go. An official's timeout has been called. 20 to 14. Rancho Alamitos have not scored since the first quarter. And I'll tell you, I don't think that's happened this year yet, Gordon. It seems like Rancho, uh, so far this season, has been scoring almost at will. So again, this might be a, a gut check now for the Vaqueros offense. You know, they're used to getting their way and pushing the ball up and down the field. And... Uh, this is gonna this is gonna be a good battle on this series because uh, again we talked about San Diego's defense, you know, keep their team fired up. It's got to take the ball away from Rancho, and on the other side, you want to take away and deflate the San Diego uh, team. And uh, obviously Rancho needs another score right now. And Steve Lopez is uh, helped and escorted, I should say, off the field. Looks like he's gonna be all right. Shot there, Coach uh, Ralph Drager. Coach Drager's been over at Santiago for years and uh, does a good job with that baseball program, too, over there. As a great coaching staff, Ben Haley's assembled over there, brought in some new guys. It has uh, really done an outstanding job with, with yeah. these players. Seems like a pretty cohesive unit. Get ready to set for action. First down and 10 for Rancho at their 20. The pitch to Kosi. Kosi 
You know, Gordon, if you're Rancho, I've got to think now that you're probably going to have to put the ball up in the air a little bit. You know, we talked about it before the game and during the first half particular that uh, Santiago's game plan is to try to stuff Rancho, attack, and take away that run and say, okay, Rancho, if you're going to beat us, you're going to have to throw the ball. Right now, Santiago, the way they're attacking, you know, you got to, again, if you're Rancho, you better consider putting the ball up in the air pretty soon and back, back Santiago off a little bit. Second and eight. Sean Young and Frank Ortiz. Near side. Yandel up to Frank Ortiz. Look out. Frank Ortiz has two defenders to beat. And he's in the lead. And Frank Ortiz is gone. Well, you know, we talked about it. You know, you, it, when the defense comes and wants to play a nose to nose, you know, the best thing to do is try to throw the ball and back them off a little bit. And, uh, you know, we... 75 uh, yards on the play, Taylor Yandel to Frank Ortiz. Yeah. And here you take a look at that. Frank just runs away from the... Cavs just ran out of gas there yeah. at the end. Yeah. But again, that, that uh, we, we talked about earlier, they, ca they came up with the right play at the right time, trying to pass the ball back off the defense a little bit. And now... The advantage that's going to give to Rancho is now they might be able to start running the ball again because now Santiago's got to be aware of the pass. Extra point is good, 27 to 14. Rancho kicks up their lead again by 13. And he hates to keep uh, drilling it in the ground, but just when he get a little momentum on one side, all of a sudden, boom, one play, and all of a sudden, the gap is two touchdowns again. Well, you know, I, I, I think the teams that have to play Rancho Alaminos this year, Gordon, their philosophy and their goal going in is that they're going to have to be willing to bend, but they're not going to be able to break because Rancho is such a quick strike offense. Not only can they uh, break a run at any time for 40, 50, 80 yards, but as you see there too, if the defenses start to cheat, you know, they can pop that pass and, and they've got enough speed at their receiver positions to get behind the DBs and it's all over as you saw with uh, Ortiz there. So I think the defenses are going to have to be willing to give a little bit, give a little bit, like you say, but they can't give up the big play and hope that Rancho might fumble or turn the ball over. And that was a two-play score. With the key play being the 75-yard touchdown pass to Frank Ortiz. The Santiago will take over at their 35-yard line and try to strike back. And now, you know, we talked about it with Rancho having possession. Now the same thing applies for Santiago. You know, to stay in this game, they got to regain some of the momentum, which means get another sustained drive going three, four, five minutes. And as Santiago calls a timeout, let's uh, go down on the sidelines and see what uh, Jeremy Woods has for us. Jeremy. You're looking at Steve Lopez, cornerback for Santiago. He has cramps. He's trying to stretch them out and rub some cream on them. But uh, he looks like he's ready and he's going to go back in the game. So uh, you got it up to, up to the minute. Pedro Hernandez was also having cramps. He's going to go back in also. Back to you guys upstairs. All right, Jeremy. Thank you. And of course, uh, seems to be not a not a real uncommon thing that that happens in these games. You know, later in the games, a lot of these kids start to start to go by that, yeah. go through that. And you, uh, yeah, being a head coach, know that it's yeah. common. But yeah, you know, I guess it's a lack of. Uh, well, you know, sometimes too. You know, we tried to. You know, when we were uh, coaching our kids over at Garner Grove High School, what we tried to do is start hydrating them out hours before the game. You know, it's not a good idea. You don't really want to get your kids drinking a bunch of water and take a bunch of salt, you know, an hour or two before the game. You know, the hydration process has to start, you know, hours before so that everything's into the system and you can, you know, God willing, keep from cramping up. So you were able to avoid that a lot because pretty of that? Pretty much so, yeah, pretty yeah. much so. We never really had problems much with cramping. The give to Via. Via gets wrapped up by New Atuatasi. Yeah, there's, uh, there's New uh Well, I'll tell you, they uh, missed him last year. New was out uh, last season and wasn't... Uh, wasn't able to play, but uh, he's a welcome addition this year. I'll take Gordon, and boy, does he uh, add strength and uh, and uh, stability to that linebacking core of over at Rancho. 
And he too is just a junior, along with Vickers and uh, Blanco and Brandon Cruz and Camarillo and a lot of these kids that are playing uh, for Rancho on the defense. And he's shown us a lot of spark for this Rancho team early in the season. Second and 11, a loss of one on that play. Catch is made by number 24, that's Pedro Hernandez, but he's immediately brought down. Yeah, Sean Young playing a corner out there, did a really good job. Uh, Santiago tried to get him to bite on the uh, on the on the streak or on the go pattern, and uh, Sean read uh, Sean read the underneath pass and came up and and made a nice hit. So third down and ten, just a gain of one on that play. The clock continues to run in the third quarter, four and a half to go, 27-14. Rancho has led since the beginning. Tran, pressure on the move, looking for no, has, it's a tough one. He was under pressure, yeah. tried to get one out there to uh, Ray Martinez, but. Yeah, that's right, Gordon, the pen uh, was under a tremendous amount of pressure, but he did a really nice job of uh, sidestepping, escaping, and trying to bide some time. Unfortunately, the, uh, for Santiago, the coverage was, was, was keen on uh, Rancho's part. We see Ben here trying to unload, stepping up, but. Uh, a nice job by the Rancho defense there. And Nam Wynn stepping in front of Martinez. Fourth and ten. The man working hard tonight, Villicano. Lines one. Short kick to David Vickers who picks up some speed and keeps on moving. Vickers moves into Santiago territory, gets down to the 45. You know what I noticed on that, Gordon, on that return by Vickers, uh, what was different from the previous returns he's had, except for that uh, that first one where they broke for a long run the first half, was he wasn't tentative there. He captured the ball and st was start streaking right up field. The last few punt returns that David uh, had, it looked like he tried to maybe tippy-toe or try to dance his way through, and if he'll just pin his ears back and, and kick it into overdrive, boy, he's a, fo he's a force. And uh, you saw there a good return that time by David Vickers. Give up the middle to Kosi. Under four minutes to play in the third quarter. You're watching Garden Grove League football on Channel 3. I'm Gordon Spencer along with Jeff Budafay. Beginning uh, year number eight, Garden Grove League football coverage on Time Warner. Now if you Rancho Gordon, uh, you got uh, a few minutes left in the quarter. Your goal here would be to uh, keep the ball for the rest of the quarter and drive it down, obviously get another score, and really, really put Santiago in a bad spot. Kelly Andel looking to pass. Intended for new Atua Tassi. Yandel, a little too much juice on that one. Yeah, he's the, he's the slinger. He's got the slingshot going there, and, and uh, Taylor was just a little high on that one, but... Uh, Again, the coaches have been pretty pleased with his progress he's made. You know, it's, it's tough for a young man like that who hasn't really played much quarterback and has been a receiver for most of his career, then being asked his senior year to, uh, you know, take on one of the most responsible spots on the field, and uh, he's doing a pretty good job. Third down and eight for Rancho at the Santiago 44-yard line. Taylor Yandel looks like uh, did look like a design play. <laughs> I'm not sure for what you call that? But that had this ain't going nowhere written all over it. Uh, he really didn't get much of a, a ride or fake at all to his dive back, and uh, consequently Santiago was able to see the ball and and get to the ball before uh, Taylor could pitch or you really get turned up field. So Santiago, the defense holds Rancho. Yeah, that was a that was a big uh, defensive stand there by Santiago. Jose Palacios back deep for the Cavaliers. Clock still running. 
2.45 to go in the third quarter. Pressure by the Cavaliers. Finally gotten out of there by Eric Camarillo. That was a high kick that didn't go too far and the, the Carrolls let it roll down to the 27 yard line. Yeah, I think Santiago's uh, rush got to the ball guy. Somebody got a hand on that ball the way it looked like it was uh, wobbling downfield. So the Cavaliers, each opportunity becomes more and more crucial yeah. Yeah. on the offense as they're down 13 points to the Vaqueros. First game of the Garden Grove League interplay. This is where it all counts. The road to the playoffs. And Ben Tran, they try to get up the middle. You know, it's uh, something that uh, Santiago might think about, you know, is uh, they've been successful with that possession passing, Gordon, that we've been seeing. But uh, if they can mix it up a little bit and not be afraid to throw on first down or or third down and short, keep Rancho off balance, not be quite as predictable running the ball on every first down play. You know, that might be able to shake something, shake something up for them and, and break somebody loose. Two minutes, clock running, second down and 10 for the Cavaliers. A nice reception is made there by number 81, that's uh, Ray Martinez. And the Vaqueros think they might have uh, intercepted that pass. Coach Case, you can see him on the far sidelines. Wondering what happened. Wait, we took that thing <laughs> away, he said. <laughs> yeah. I think they're going to give the reception to the receiver and say that the ball was stripped after the receiver went down. So seven yards on that play brings up third and three. One minute and 40 seconds to go in the third. The give the Carbajal. Carbajal works it outside and gets enough and then some for the first down, Santiago. Yeah, real nice job by Carlos there, Gordon, of uh, seeing things stuffed in the middle and bouncing to the outside. And, uh, you know, that young man did a good job for him last year. And unfortunately, he went down with a season ending injury towards the middle of the season. But, uh, yeah, you know, you see here he's popping to the outside. He's covering the ball up, protecting the ends of it, falling forward for yardage. And, uh, Boy, if they would have had him last year towards the end, it might have been a little different outcome for Santiago. That's true. That was a, a rough ending for his season early on. Minute 10 left in the third. The give to Villa. Villa cuts up the middle and gets four more for the Cavaliers. Yeah, the off credit the offensive line of Santiago to Gordon right now. They're... Uh, they're being able to neutralize the Rancho defensive front, and uh, V and Carbajal are getting room to run, and and Ben uh, is unloading the ball in time, and uh, you know th at least they've got the opportunities. You know, it's, it's not like the ball's getting stuffed right back in their face before they can get anything started. 30 seconds to go in the third. The clock continues to run. Second down and six for Santiago. Octavio Villa, a little delay, just short of the first down. Uh, bring up third down and about one for the Cavaliers. If he got in behind his uh, pulling lineman there and was uh, picking picking a running lane and getting upfield, and again, when you when if they'll be content on those three or four yard uh, plays, uh, that's that's enough. They'll be able to keep possession of the ball, move it down, score, and, and again, you can't say it enough. You got to keep the ball out of Rancho's hands with that offense that they've got. And the Cavaliers are not going to get another playoff. They're going to uh, switch. Fields, and that marks the end of the third quarter. The Cavaliers looking for 13 at least in the fourth. We'll uh, see what happens. We'll be right back with the fourth and final quarter right after this. <laughs> you made it. Hey, I couldn't have gotten through physics without you. Yeah, well, you're on your own at college. It's not fair. Oh, that's all right. I'm going to get a job, you know. I'm start working. I'm safe. And I'll be in college another year or two. Mike. Oh, what did you have fun, Mike? Uh, I think I'm going to go home and make a sandwich. Okay, 
Support the United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Rancho, not a lot of possession time, but they struck quickly and... Uh, yeah, that one big play, Gordon, was it, basically, for Rancho, like you said. And, uh, again, Santiago has, you know, I'm impressed. You know, they the way, again, the way this game started looked like uh, all heck would have broken loose for them. But they've hung in there and battled, and uh, they've played Rancho almost to a standstill since that first three minutes. They're going to try to battle their way back here. Down by 13, start of the fourth. First down and 10 for the Cavaliers. Play action, Ventran to an open, Morgan Heskett. The six foot three senior, good enough for a first down. Yeah. Pick up of about 14 on the play. Yeah, Gordon Santiago brought Heskett, uh, who was wide right into in motion, and then they ran him on a drag across the middle of the field, and uh, Ben rolling that to the left, found him wide open in the middle. First and 10 for Santiago. On the Rancho 31. Villa, giving up the middle, loses the ball. The ball is still loose. Villa and a host of Vaqueros surround the ball. And Rancho does recover the fumble. Tough break for Santiago. Yeah, they had things going there and uh, Octavio had been running really well, unfortunately. Uh, to give up the ball now, that's that's really going to be costly because uh, it looks like that might be taking some of the wind out of Santiago's sails, so to speak. Via looked like his uh, feet got stopped. Top of his body kept going and leaves him pretty vulnerable there for uh, losing the ball. That's what happened. Sometimes that extra effort, you know, you can't fault him. He's just trying, you know, that extra effort. Sometimes that's when the ball gets hit. Eleven and a half to go. The pitch to Kosi. Rancho takes over on the fumble. Flag in the backfield. Flags everywhere. And uh, the Rancho Vaqueros fumble the ball, but it's recovered by Vickers. And the call is holding. That's the flag behind the line of scrimmage. This really hasn't been a pretty game to watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, between the penalties and the fumbles, uh, the Coaches' staffs are going to have something to say to their players after this, I'm sure. Yeah, I Kevin kept track a lot of a lot of that, but I'll tell you, you're right. They'll uh, they'll be looking at this tape, see a lot of ugliness going on. <laughs> <laughs> but a few bright spots. So the Vaqueros are forced in a first down and 22 situation. Clock running, 11.15 to go in this game. Our first one of the season. First of what we hope are going to be some great games on Channel 3. Taylor Yandel gives to Kosi. Look out, Leo Kosi. Yeah. Nice job by Kosi busting through. Uh, what Rancho did was they widened their splits on the right side of the line, which... Uh, forces the defense for Santiago to have to widen as well and make uh, bigger running lanes, larger holes for the ranch running backs. And with Cozy and Vickers and those guys being able to hit as fast as they do, that puts a lot of pressure on that defense. You know, one, one thing we haven't mentioned is the, uh, you know, if people haven't seen Rancho this year, they might not recognize them. They have a, a whole new look there. Yeah, I'll tell you that I thought it might have been the Michigan Wolverines at first uh, looking at <laughs> right there, but uh, those gold pants. But yeah, they decided for a new look this year and I gotta ask Coach Queso how that relates to a vaquero. I'm just not sure yet with those <laughs> little wing things and stripes going down the helmet, but uh, hey, if they're happy with the look, more power to them, I guess. Well, Coach Coach Case, they, they go with that look, you know, and it depends on their success. They think uh, you know, it has a lot to do with it, and they feel pretty good, and especially after the start they've had. You know, Rancho kind of known the last few years for a real slow start. You know, their preseason is not, not real strong at all, and then somehow when league hits, they just, they Turn just it pop on. off, but yeah. Yeah. this year they came out fired, so yeah. Yeah. they're they're pretty happy with this yeah. look. Yeah, if that's it, uh, it, it looks a lot really like the uh, the Irvine High School Vaqueros and the look they put on that's their helmet. Yeah, that's what people have said. They've kind of switched Irvine Vaqueros have uh, switched to Rancho's look. 
And a sack there. Yandel taking back down by the Santiago defense. Reynaldo Lua. And again, leading the charge gotta, out of there. I'll tell you, Gordon, you got to credit the Santiago defense. They are playing tough, and, and they're not giving in. And they're continuing to put the pressure on Rancho's offense. And now they're going to get a shot and put the ball back. And if they can just keep, keep hold of it, don't give it up. And be content to get those three, four, five-yard plays. Hey, you know, they still got plenty of time. Well, they made Rancho pay for the, for the penalty that, that they uh, caused on themselves. The first down and 22. They made sure they weren't going to come out of that hole. And that's, that's right. exactly what they did. That's right. The punt is away. And they'll let it roll. Eric Camarillo gets a favorable Rancho roll. Well, again, we talked about it earlier with uh, David Vickers and, and Steve Lopez when he was back uh, returning the punt score. And that's, that's one thing as a coach you just don't want to see is your return man back there watching the ball bounce and roll towards your goal line. It's, uh, you know, that, that can be a killer when, you, you know, a, a, a Rancho can pick up an extra 20 yards on the punt because you, you decided to let the ball roll instead of catching it and trying to get it worked up field. So the Cavaliers are... Going to have to test out their passing game. Eight minutes, 44 seconds. Down by two touchdowns. Ben Tran, a quick underneath to Pedro Hernandez. Hernandez wrapped up out of bounds at about the 35. Gain of five for Santiago. And again, that was a good job by Santiago. I, I like seeing that them passing on first down. That... Uh, makes them less predictable and Rancho, you know, be less, less tentative to try to load up front on every first down that uh, Santiago tries to run. Clock running just over eight minutes. Carlos Carbajal checks out of the game. They go with Heskett and Martinez, the wide receivers. Villa off the end, Ben Tran back to pass. A quick one thrown there and lost by Villa. Passes incomplete. Yeah, Santiago came out that no back offense again, and uh, Octavio Villa was out on about a three-yard out pattern. And actually, Ben put the ball right there. It was just a, it was a good defensive play. You know, the, the defenders broke on the ball and and hit Octavio just as the ball was hitting was hitting him. So it was well timed by the Rancho uh, defense and a good throw by Ben by Ben Tran. Yeah, Tran. He was under pressure too. He had to get rid of that because he had a couple guys that were uh, actually about five ten yards deeper that uh, were a lot more open, but. He had to go with a quick one. Yeah, when you don't have any backs back there blocking for you and that charge breaks through that wet first line of defense, it's, uh, it makes it really tough on a quarterback. And they're pressuring him now. Nice block, but uh, Ben Tran pays for it. Ricardo Islas trying to block back there. Well, I'll tell you, Ben got wrapped up and thrown. Body slammed there. Brings up a fourth down situation. Yeah, you see Ben there getting slammed down. It might have jarred him enough to knock the wind out of him for a second. Villicano back for the Cavaliers. Clock running, 7-10 left. Villicano gets a short one off, but gets a good roll. It'll die about the 49 yard line of the Cavaliers so a big test for the Santiago defense I don't know if you noticed on that or not but Rancho rushed absolutely nobody I think they're maybe trying to get a, uh, a return set up and then keep keep Santiago on the line of scrimmage not let them work themselves downfield that that's was a, that was a weird looking uh, <laughs> That's why Villicano took the lob snap. Yeah. Kind of a, uh, he could have stood there for to run the clock out. <laughs> <laughs> could have aimed it where he wanted to. Yeah. Big drive now for Rancho. Yandel. To who else? Leo's getting a good test tonight, Gord. You know, without Alex's uh, running, running buddy back there this week. Uh, you know, he's had to carry the ball uh, double time and maybe triple time than what he's used to, you know, with Alex Blanco being back there, too. So, uh, you know, he's getting a good good workout tonight. Rancho Alamitas comes into this game, ranks 
as the fifth best team in Division 8. And they're okay. showing why with a 13 point lead over the Cavaliers tonight. Vickers this time gets a couple more. Yeah, Gordon, that's a little slice play to, to uh, David Vickers there. And, uh, well, I'll tell you, he's, he's running hard. I'll tell you, having to play linebacker and fullback going both ways, those two positions you probably get hit on more times than any other out there. And, and, and the pounding that that young man takes game after game playing those two spots, fullback and linebacker, and for him to be able to still run and accelerate like he does, you know, he's an athlete. He's got to be in pretty good shape. One big bruise, I guess. Boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> Lots of ice. He sees a lot of ice, I'm sure, after every game. Third down and four. Kosi loses the ball again on the pitch. But again, it looks like the Vaqueros get the lucky recovery as it bounces around amongst the Cavaliers and the Vaqueros. And they're trying to figure out who it end up with because uh, number 65... David Melendez comes up with it and they'll award it to the Cavaliers. Melendez kind of got up like, hey, look at what I found. You know, on that play, Gordon, it looked like uh, Taylor Yandel never did get that ball seeded into Leon Cozy at all. That uh, Leon acted like uh, he didn't know where the ball was and uh, he might have hit it and, 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 and knocked it forward out of his reach. And, and now Santiago, boy, I'll tell you, they can't ask for many more breaks than this. So the Cavaliers to see if they can get something back. 27-14, down by 13. Five and a half to play in this game. Well, Short Patea. underneath Steve Lopez, the intended receiver. Nua Tuatasi had his eyeball set on that, and I'll tell you, if he would have been able to capture that ball, he would have been gone for a score. He did a real good job of, uh, of breaking on that ball and reading, reading Ben Tran. Five twenty-five to go. Don't forget next week, Los Amigos and Pacifica. That will be the game we'll be broadcasting. Another great one. Second and ten. Tran, right up the middle. Which one? Which one wants it? Pedro Hernandez takes the tip from Steve Lopez. That's a team effort. Yeah, and, I, and I'll tell you something. I don't know if you're able to see that on uh, the camp, but uh, Ralph uh, Sacoria, the defensive tackle from Rancho, he was uh, busting through, and uh, I don't know if you can see it here on the replay or not, but uh, number 56, Sacoria from Rancho Lyman, he gets literally grabbed by the jersey and <laughs> yanked down so Ben could get rid of that ball, and uh, fortunately for Santiago, they didn't get called for uh, offensive holding on that, but... Uh, I think Ralph uh, Zacharia is wondering what in the world is going on out here. He's getting <laughs> tackled trying to get to the quarterback. So Pedro Hernandez, who made that uh, catch, is still down on the field. He may be cramping as well. want to thank the uh, crew tonight as well. A lot of people helping out. Tim Flanagan directing in the game. Long time, real good friend of mine. Known him for years, we go way back. <laughs> 27 to 14, 13 point lead for the Vaqueros. No more compliments for the director. <laughs> 5.15 to go. It's lucky you folks out there can't hear both sides of the conversation, <laughs> but uh, oh dear. I'll, I'll keep it to myself. <laughs> Happy Thursday. Back to action. Tran looking for an open receiver. Has Steve Lopez. Lopez through the defense and down to the 20-yard line. I'll tell you, Gordon, what made that play go was uh, Ben Tran got back real well. He dropped back real well, but he, you notice he stepped up, stepped up, stepped up forward in the pocket and was able to, uh, you know, come up past that past that rush of Rancho and give himself time to hit uh, to hit his receiver. Hurry up offense for Santiago. Tran rolling out. Villa not able to turn himself around quick enough. 
that play was a little rushed there. And like you said, uh, by the time Octavio, Octavio got himself straightened out, the ball had already been delivered. And uh, But it does stop the clock. So if you're trying to look at the positive side for Santiago, that does stop the clock for him. Jose Palacios brings the play into Ben Tran. The Cavaliers need two touchdowns. 4.53 to play. Morgan Heskett in motion. Check that Martinez in motion for the Cavaliers. Almost picked off there by number 25, Nam Win. Yeah, Wynn did a pretty good job there going. The ball was thrown a little behind and low by uh, Ben, and uh, Wynn just about was able to dive and capture that ball for Rancho. You see the ball is just a little, little underthrown, and closest player to that ball was Rancho's Wynn. Third and ten. Santiago. Looking for at least a first down. Tran under pressure. Underneath. Pass is complete. Pedro Hernandez makes the catch, but still short. That's going to bring up fourth down. Santiago. Again, Gordon. Ben's doing a good job of hanging in there. You know, see him standing there at the last minute and delivers just before he takes the hit. And he makes another completion. Back to action, Ben Tran. Heavy, heavy coverage there. Pedro Hernandez, the intended receiver, covered by Mike Hanlon and Nam Wynn, and the Vaqueros will take over on downs. You know, the problem Gordon Santiago was gonna have on that play was uh, Hernandez on his route, made the break before uh, he had enough yardage for the first down, and if that ball would have been completed, he probably still would have wound up yard short. You know, you want your receiver to uh, at least get down to the f first down marker before he wants to uh, make a break. So if he does catch the ball, he's got enough yardage for the first down. So Tran, despite his 43-yard performance in that drive, uh, just not enough. The important part was uh, needing a score, and Santiago comes up empty. So now Leo Kosi will try to add to his yardage, and Kosi will get enough, or just be short, I should say, of a first down. Picks up about eight. On that play, Gordon Santiago was stunning their uh, inside linebacker, and uh, you know the linebacker's charging, trying to get through, and uh, ball's handed off to Cozy. He runs right by the uh, linebacker that's uh, that's on the on the blitz. So uh, that was a good call there by Rancho on that play. Four minutes, four seconds left in this game. Officials call a timeout. They're going to check to see if uh, Leo Cozy did in fact get a first down. And they do give Rancho Alamitos a first down. You know, one thing about Rancho that's impressive with their line is they've got uh, kids like Antonio Salgado and Ruben Amaya and Robert uh, Mitchell. These are all juniors. We'll all be back next year. And, uh, and they're looking pretty good. Their first, uh, their first stint, their first go around with the Rancho Vaquero football team. On the other uh, side, the Cavaliers, 24 seniors My on that goodness. team. My goodness, yeah, they, I would say probably Santiago and Pacifica are the two teams in the league that are uh, most senior, you know, no, uh, no pun intended, but they're the oldest, probably the oldest teams. They, they start and play predominantly seniors. And uh, so it's gonna be interesting to see what happens, not looking too far in the future, obviously, but uh, next year, both uh, Santiago and Pacifica